everyone and welcome to our United in Prayer online gathering. It is wonderful to have you with us today as we continue to stand together united in prayer. It is wonderful to have Elizabeth Yordan with us today. Elizabeth lives in Pretoria in South Africa and has been in ministry and the missions field for over 30 years. And today Elizabeth will encourage us to embrace a steadfast faith in God, firmly rooted in his word and strengthened by the certainty of his promises. Elizabeth, we look forward to hearing from you. Hello, everybody. It's good to see you again. And yes, I want to talk about something that the Bible tells us. It is very, very essential, and that is to have faith in God. But uh, the other day I was talking to somebody, somebody that says, but he doesn't have faith for this thing that he is going through. So I want to just quote some scriptures and then we will go into just exploring what it says. And the first scripture is from Hebrew 11, verse 6, and it says, Without faith it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. And then Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Very important scripture. And then Jesus spoke in Luke 8, and is actually the woman that had the issue of blood. And he says to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. And a little while later in Luke 17, verse 5, the apostle said to the Lord, Lord, increase our faith. So here we have all these different things concerning faith. And in Luke 17, 6, he says, If you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. And I think that I don't know if you have enough faith to uproot a tree and to plant it in the sea. So here is uh, the, the solution, Romans 10, 17. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. It is very interesting when we look at faith. Actually, a whole believer's walk is a walk of faith. And although we, maybe all of us, believe that God exists, and all of us believe that Jesus is the Son of God, still our lives can be a life of little faith and even of unbelief. And many ex believers do not experience the fullness of God's promises or they pretend that they are okay. And that pretense that we have, it's actually called make-believe. Make-believe is something that we imagine. Okay, this is how it's going to be, and I can believe for that. And that is not how God wants us to believe. So my question is, how can we grow in real faith so that we can believe God without doubting? The, well, the thing is that the first thing is we must believe that God exists. And then faith comes as a complete trust or confidence that what God says is the truth and he will do it without a doubt. So first of all, I need to actually believe that God exists and that he will reward me for my faith in him. And it means the trust is that I will rely on who he is because of his character. And faith must turn into that I believe and I have an act of faith because I accept personally what God promises me. So it is a Thing that we need to we need to trust the, the the words faith, belief, and trust are all intertwined in this understanding of what is faith. So faith involves reliance and trust, and it endures in the face of doubts, 
or when circumstances don't give us the uh, assurance that is God really with me? But we have to trust him that this is what he said and that is why we believe in him. We, we cannot just pretend that things are okay and I'm all right. Then we cannot stand firm in our faith. Now, how do one receive faith? Okay, we read the scripture that it comes by hearing the word of God or the word of Christ. So I need to read or hear the word. The word of God is the Logos. The Logos is both a person and it is the written word, the testimony about Jesus Christ. So when you read it, the Holy Spirit is the person that works in, in your heart the moment that you read scripture. And the Holy Spirit brings conviction of a truth. And he also convicts you that you still don't believe that truth. So we have to act on this conviction. Our first reaction normally is, I don't believe it. Or I can't believe this is true of me. Uh, if, or any sinful human being cannot believe that the Holy God can love him or her until the Holy Spirit starts making this a truth for you. And if you confess your unbelief, we must be very clear that say, Lord, I don't believe this yet. And then the word come becomes like a seed in your heart. So if you are just sorry for your unbelief, it does not yet mean that you have you've received faith. Because unbelief makes God a liar. Part of repentance is to become obedient to something that God says. And obedience is always an act of faith. So when we receive the word of God and we ponder it, or we reponder the promise that he made, we meditate on it, we grasp the truth of it, and we begin to long for it to be true in our lives. And then we learn about God's character and his will. In that moment that you say, but God, because of your character, I want this for myself. Then the Logos word of God turns into Rhema. When the Holy Spirit comes and he makes this word a personal promise to you that the Lord said this is also for you and you need to experience that in your heart. That is the very first sign that the life of the word is transforming your inner man. And what actually happened, your inner man is Christ that's becoming flesh again in you. So the word, the Logos, becomes alive, living in you. And in this process of transformation, we discover a very personal interaction between ourselves and the person of God. Now, every person must be, receive faith in his or her own heart. You cannot rely on someone else's faith. And when we trust God, we say, Lord, on, 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 based on, on the evidence of your character, I take a leap of faith and I'm going to be obedient to what you are telling me, saying I, I actually structure my life around this truth. I want to step out onto the water and believe that this is what you have for me. So the, the, one of the things that helps us is if we listen to testimonies of other believers, and the Bible is full of it. When we hear about another person that had gone something like through, similar to us, we receive a, another encouragement in this arena of faith, and it's called hope. Hope makes us expect that it will become true for us. So I am going to pray for us that we go to the Logos, we expect the Rhema, and we anticipate with hope the very personal action that God says this promise is for you. So, Father, we come to you. You are our God. We want to know you. We want to believe and trust in you 
so that our faith is built upon your very own character. And we ask that you will make the Logos word for us into Rhema so that we can grasp it and it become part of our lives and that we will live extraordinary lives of faith in you. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. Elizabeth, thank you for this reminder to grow in faith so that we can truly experience the abundant life that God has planned for us to move beyond pretense and genuinely step into his dreams, we must first acknowledge our doubts and struggles instead of putting on our masks and pretending to be someone we're not. Real faith is a deep, genuine trust in God that goes beyond mere belief or intellectual agreement. It involves a heartfelt reliance and trust on God's character, promises and presence. Real faith is active. It manifests through obedience, prayer, and a commitment to live according to God's will. Real faith requires vulnerability and honesty, allowing us to embrace the hope and the fullness of his promises and fully realize the incredible plans that he has for us. We will now be breaking into our smaller rooms to pray together. Our prayer prompt for today is, Lord, we stand united in prayer, seeking to grow in our faith as we open our hearts to fully experience the fullness of all you desire for us. Help us to trust in your promises and embrace the abundant life you offer. For our Facebook listeners, thank you that you have joined us today. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And now for all of us, let's break into our smaller rooms to pray together.